Haley Deegan made her first career NASCAR Truck Series start today, and during Stage 1, Ford announced that she's going to be doing a lot more truck racing come 2021. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric, and welcome to Out of the Groove, Saturday night edition of this show. I usually don't post episodes on Saturday night unless there's a Saturday night cup race, but I just got done watching the Kansas Speedway Truck Series race. Congratulations to Brett Moffitt. Picked a great time to get his first truck win of the season. The 2018 Series champion is locked into the championship four for the Truck Series. People often ask me what drivers, and specifically the Xfinity or Truck Series I'm watching, who I think are some of the more underrated drivers, and Brett Moffitt is often one of the first names I list, even though he is is a truck series champion like I mentioned it'd be great to see him in a top you know Xfinity ride at some point because uh, I truly think Brett Moffat is one of the most underrated drivers in all three NASCAR national series but uh he got the win today that's not what we're talking about today the truck series playoffs were a huge story today Haley Deegan making her first career truck series start was a huge story but the biggest story actually came out during the truck series race and again it does relate to Haley Deegan and her future NASCAR plans in the middle of the race this afternoon Ford Performance announced that Haley Deegan will race full-time in the NASCAR Gander Truck Series next season. I forgot, actually, they're changing the name back to the Camping World Truck Series next year, but yes, Haley Deegan will race full-time next year. That will be her first season of full-time racing in any of NASCAR's main three national touring series. She's going to race for DGR Crossley, which is the same team she raced for today, and is the same team she runs for in the Arca Menard Series. This is big news. Haley Deegan has been a highly talked about driver. We've talked about her a lot on this show. We've had her on this show. She has gotten a lot of attention over the last several years, starting out in the then k and West series, winning a few races over there, moving this year into a full-time ARCA series ride. Doesn't have a win this year. We'll talk about her numbers in a minute, but it's still run pretty well. Her season actually in ARCA just came to an end this weekend as well, but now making her truck series debut and moving now into the truck series next season. There's a lot to discuss as far as this announcement is concerned and what it means, not just for next year, but for many years down the line. But with Chase Briscoe more than likely moving into the NASCAR NASCAR Cup Series next year for Stuart Haas Racing. That's not confirmed, but he is the leading candidate to replace Clint Boyer in the 14 next year. Assuming that happens, Haley Deegan is likely going to be the highest profile for development driver in NASCAR. And when you factor in her massive online social media following, she's got like over 800,000 followers on Instagram. Her future in NASCAR could be very bright. And I think NASCAR's future, if Haley Deegan is successful, will certainly be bright. But I do want to start this by briefly discussing her Truck Series debut today. She finished 16th at Kansas Speedway in her first Truck Series start. The best finish by a woman in her Truck Series debut in Truck Series history. She started at the rear of the field because of no qualifying and also no practice. She worked her way up into the mid-20s by the end of stage one. She managed to dodge the big wreck barely at the beginning of stage two, ran in the mid-teens, high teens during most of stage two, ended up 18th at the end. And then in stage three, she ran as high as 12th. Well, I guess technically she ran as high as like sixth or second even during green flag pit stops, but uh, she ran as high as 12th on the actual racetrack, fell back to around 15th, 16th, was running you know top 15 lap times. And uh, when it was all said and done after a late race restart, she ends up finishing the race in 16th position. Exceeded my expectations. My expectations today were for her to finish somewhere between 20th and 25th. That's what I was expecting, and she consistently ran higher than that. Other than the first run of the race, where she was about a second or so off the leader's pace, she was much better than that in stage two and three. By the end of the race, her lap times were less than half a second off the leader, so she made up multiple tenths of a second per lap just over the course of one race by itself. So I was impressed with Haley Deegan today. She was working with veteran Cup Series crew chief Drew Blickensurfer, who I know as a, the guy who won the 2009 Daytona 500 with Matt Kenseth. He's been around a while and she was also working with Kevin Harvick spotter Tim Fidoa who listening again to the radio they did a great job of coaching her through uh, many different sequences especially pit road. Early on she made a mistake of of being a little too close to pit wall made it hard for the jack man to jack up the left side. She fixed that on her next pit stop and then during green flag stop she actually ran out of gas coming to pit road and uh, they had to kind of coach her through getting onto pit road and getting off pit road and making sure engine was getting fuel and that she was able to get back up to speed as quick as possible. So that was all really interesting to hear uh, a first-time driver really be coached through things that I think veteran drivers kind of 
just go without saying. But I thought the most telling bit of radio audio listening to her radio during this race was she came on late in stage three and said that this is way better than ARCA racing. <laughs> I'm sure she doesn't mean this as any real disrespect to ARCA, but this is the point I've been making for several weeks now. A couple weeks ago, it was announced she was going to run this truck series race to get herself ready for an eligible for 2021. And what I said then, and I'll say it again now, is Haley Deegan moving to trucks full time next year is the best career move. Some people are saying she's being moved up too quick because her ARCA numbers aren't spectacular. But Haley Deegan's a Deegan. She's the daughter of Brian Deegan, who's an X Games superstar. He's a fairly well known name. She's got Cup Series racing on her plate, more than likely a few years down the line. And with that in mind, it's all about improving and learning as much as you can now while she's still technically a teenager. And she's just going to learn way more in trucks than she's ever going to learn in ARCA. ARCA these days, most of it's short tracks for one, which the NASCAR Cup Series is a lot more intermediate, it's a lot more road courses. So she's going to have to make that transition. But also in ARCA, there's really only eight or nine competitive cars on a weekly basis. There's only like 15, 20, 25 cars in the field each race, but even of them, most of them are just ride around in the back at half speed pretty much. See, there's only eight or nine competitive cars. So you're not racing around other drivers that are at your speed very much at all in ARCA versus trucks where there's 20, I'd say, at least 20 pretty competitive trucks each week. Deegan mentioned this in her post-race interview. You're constantly battling. You're constantly looking at your rearview mirror. You're constantly looking out the windshield, trying to plan your move. You're not only racing the track, you're also racing your competition. That's something that she has, she's been getting almost no experience of in ARCA, especially not at the bigger tracks like Kansas. So her running trucks next season, I think is, is great. She may run 15th to 20th most of next season, but she's going to learn way more running in the mid-teens next year than she would have running fifth in another ARCA season. And that, that's just my opinion. And again, we do have to treat Haley Deegan a little bit differently than we might treat some of these other drivers because Haley Deegan has, she does have some funding behind her. She again, has a big name. She has a huge social media following. I don't really think it's a matter of if she goes Xfinity or cup racing one day. I think it's more a matter of when she eventually goes Xfinity and probably cup racing one day and how long it actually takes her to get there. And more importantly, how good is she when she does get those opportunities? Because like I said at the beginning of the show, if Haley Deegan turns out to be a contender in trucks and then maybe in Xfinity and hopefully one day in cup if she contends for wins if she maybe one day contends for cup championships that will be huge for NASCAR's popularity going into the coming decades. I know some people are going to roll their eyes when I say things like that. And I understand, you know, in any professional sport, you expect the athletes to be rewarded purely based on merit. You want the best players, the best drivers to get the promotions, to get into the big leagues, to play for the best teams. NASCAR, though, has never really worked that way. NASCAR is its own unique beast in a lot of ways. In NASCAR, while the driver is often the face of the franchise, you know, they really are only a relatively small part of the overall operation. I've heard several drivers give different numbers, but as far as how much of a team's performance is driver versus car, I'd say most people agree like 30% of, of their performance is based on the driver and the other probably 50, 60% is car with like pit crew and stuff, another 10% in between. Driver obviously matters. They're a huge chunk of the pie, but car matters a lot as well. And how do you make your car go fast? Funding. Where do you get funding? Corporate sponsorship. Haley Deegan is going to get corporate sponsorship. At least early on in her career, she will. Down the line, if the performance really never gets there, then sure. I mean, even Danica Patrick ran out of sponsorship money after about four years of mediocre performance in the Cup Series. And when she first arrived in NASCAR, there there was a ton of fanfare around Danica. So yes, sponsorship money can dry up and possibly could dry up for someone like Haley Deegan down the line. But her first few years, the next few years, I don't think she's going to have too many issues funding her seat. And so that's just the truth of it. I know fans are going to roll their eyes and say, oh, I wish the best drivers got the promotions. You know, there's certainly better drivers in ARCA than Haley Deegan right now that are perhaps more worthy of a full-time truck ride for a fairly competitive team. But that's not the way NASCAR works. That's never really been the way NASCAR has worked. I mean, that hasn't been the way NASCAR has worked since I've been alive. It really hasn't been the way NASCAR has worked ever. So uh, that's just something everyone kind of has to accept. I mean, I kind of accepted it. I don't have to like it, but you kind of just have to accept it. With the next gen car into the Cup Series, maybe that will change a little bit going forward, but drivers who uh, who are fan favorites, who can attract sponsorship, who have uh, the ability to help fund the team more than other drivers are always going to have an inherent advantage when it comes to uh, trying to land the best seats out there. So don't hate the player. If anything, hate the game at this point, but the game has been the way it's been for decades in NASCAR. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Now, if we look at some of Haley Deegan's numbers in ARCA and ARCA West, formerly k and West, 
She does have three wins in the now ARCA West series. She raced all 28 ARCA West races from 2018 to 2019, got those three wins. Her best points finish was third in 2019. Remember, she lost the championship to her teammate, Derek Krause, who's raced full-time in trucks this year. That was back when she drove for Toyota. At the end of 2019, she announced that she was switching to Ford. She was going to be Ford's newest development driver. And here in 2020, she's run full-time in the main ARCA Menard series for DGR Crosley. 20 races this season, zero wins, but four top fives and 17 top tens, an average finish of 7.3. She ends up finishing third in the points. Now that sort of is an inflated statistic because there are only four drivers that raced all 20 races in ARCA this year. So uh, like I said, her average finish was 7.3. She ran about seventh most races this year. Again, there's only about 10 competitive cars in ARCA. So not fantastic. You compare it to some of her teammates like uh, Taylor Gray, who didn't run all the races this year, but his number's a little bit better. His average finish, 5.7 this year in similar equipment to Deegan. You also look at like Thad Moffat though, who also ran only a few races this season. I think he ran eight races? 13. Never mind. Thad Moffat made 13 starts this year. Only eight top tens. Average finish of uh, of 10th. So his number's not as good as Haley Deegan. So middle of the pack compared to her teammates this year. Again, this has not been a bad Arkham Menard season for Haley Deegan. In fact, a lot of the races she's gone to this year, a lot of the tracks, this is her first time racing at some of these tracks. This was really her first year of consistently going to big tracks like Kansas Speedway and, and things like that. So she's learned a lot this year and with COVID limiting the amount of practice and qualifying at a lot of these races, she's really had to learn quickly. Her Arkham season has not been bad, but it certainly has not been phenomenal. But like I said at the beginning of this episode, I think it's smart for her to move to trucks full time next year. I'll be excited to see what she can do. Like I said at the beginning of this episode, she exceeded my expectations today in her truck series debut. We'll see what 2021 holds, but if she ran 16th today with no practice or anything, first time in a truck, at one point over the radio, she didn't know if she had engine fan switches. I mean, if this is how her debut went today, I definitely think she can contend for top tens and top fives with some regularity next season. So I'll be excited to watch. Anyway, that's really all I want to talk about in this episode, a very Haley Deegan focused episode, but we have not talked about Haley Deegan very much this year because of her fairly average ARCA season. But certainly big news, Ford is making a huge investment into her. Weird that they had made the announcement during her first start and they kind of just quietly tweeted about it. Like it wasn't, I don't even think they mentioned it on the broadcast until kind of later on in the show when word got to them. So it was kind of a weird way to announce. I feel like they could have done it with a little bit more fanfare, but uh, that's all we have to talk about. Haley Deegan is, is a top prospect in NASCAR. She's talented, Clearly has a lot of work to do still, but I will stand by this. She is the closest thing I think we have to a modern day Jeff Gordon. I know you guys are gonna roll your eyes, but hear me out. Not as far as talent, not necessarily as far as her ceiling. I don't think she's as good as Jeff Gordon. I don't think she'll ever be as good as Jeff Gordon. Very few have ever been nearly as good as Jeff Gordon has been. But Jeff Gordon, when he rose into NASCAR fame in the 90s, the sport rose with him. Jeff Gordon, in a lot of ways, was largely responsible for vaulting NASCAR into the, the relevance it had in the late 90s and early 2000s how big and massive and bloated it was. NASCAR was mainstream in the early 2000s and it has clearly fallen from that light in recent years over the last decade and a half. If any driver currently in NASCAR or coming through the NASCAR ranks right now has the ability to do what Jeff Gordon did in the 90s, it's Haley Deegan. I know that's a lot of pressure to put on her, but that's why we're talking about her on shows like mine. That's why the Fox broadcast uh, highlighted her during today's race and why her debut does matter because Haley Deegan, because of her name, because of her gender, let's be honest, being a woman helps in this case, and because of her outgoing personality and strong social media following, she has the ability to make NASCAR close maybe to what it once was. I don't think we'll ever get back to what it was in the late 90s, early 2000s, but she can boost NASCAR into the uh, coming decades the way no other driver since Jeff Gordon has been able to. But she's going to have to learn and she's going to have to get results because she cannot ride around in 20th for the next five years in whatever series she's in and expect to make a difference. She's going to have to run for wins and get wins at some point or another if NASCAR is going to benefit from her, uh, her rise into stardom. But that's all I want to talk about in today's episode. That's all I've got. Be sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel. We talk NASCAR almost every single day tomorrow night after the cup series race at kansas we'll be back to talk about that race first race of the round of eight in the playoffs a big thank you of course to my amazing patreon supporters as well could not do this show without your tremendous support i will see you all tomorrow night there's an xfinity race happening probably by the time you're watching this episode so hope that's a good one as well i will see you again later this weekend take care everyone